What's up players, Ryan here from Base Matter, taking you through the core bass learning program. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at learning the notes on the fretboard and identify why it's so important to know them everywhere. We're gonna use a pretty fun riff to be able to do that, and we're gonna take a look at identifying some new ways to use our left hand so we can really start zooming all over the fretboard. Let's get to work. Hey, what's up players? We're gonna take a look at learning the notes on the fretboard. Now, one of the things that's always surprised me is there are players out there that have played for years and even have live shows and studio time under their belt and they don't know the notes on the fretboard. And there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. You don't have to know the notes on the fretboard to really start playing. However, let me point out a little bit of information for you here. If you know your notes on the fretboard, you are free to explore your fretboard through notation and through communication with others and not having any hindrances there. Now here's, one, here's a trick question for you. How many notes are on your bass? So this one's got 24 frets and four strings. How many notes are on an 88 key piano? The answer is 12. There are only 12 notes on our instruments, whether it be bass, guitar, piano, saxophone, whatever it might be, there's only 12 notes on there. There's always exceptions to the rule, I know, but for Western music instruments, there's 12 notes out there. Everything just simply has different octaves of those same 12 notes. Let me show you. In the first five frets here, we cover the entire musical alphabet, which is A through G, covering all of the different sharps and flats in between, all in the first five frets. Now that's what's so cool is that you can play basically any song out there in the first five frets on your bass. You never have to go above here. Now of course you may want to for particular tones or bringing up the notes or whatever it might be as far as the pitch, but all the notes already exist down here. So everything above the fifth fret is simply a replication of what's down here. Of course we bring the pitches up and it sounds different and that's going to be more of controlling your tone later. So let's start off by looking at how to memorize these notes. First off, go get the chart from the website, bassmatter.com, totally free, maps out all of the notes in the fretboard for a four string bass. Go grab it right away, it's gonna be a great visualization for you. There's also apps on the app stores and for uh, iPhones and for smartphones and for tablets, tons and tons of tools out there to help you memorize the notes in your fretboard. One of the other tricks I've seen people do is just pick one string and memorize the notes on that string up to the fifth fret for one week and then go to the next week and memorize that one and then going so on and so forth, right? Whatever method works for you. For me, playing has always been the most effective way for me to start retaining this info. So here's a riff. It is Chameleon from Herbie Hancock. Let me show it to you. <laughs> Let's look at the notes of that particular riff. So opening up with our very first note is an open E, and that's the thickest string closest to my chin right here, open E string. Then I go to the very first fret, which is going to be an F. Then I go to the second fret using my second finger, as you notice here, and that is going to be an F sharp or a G flat. And then the third fret, which is a G. So here's all four of those notes. Da, 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 da. With my right hand, I'm trying to alternate every single time. With my left hand, I wanna make sure I'm using one finger per fret. E, F, F sharp, G. And of course, this can also be G flat as well. So F sharp and G flat. Now, let's take a look at this cool trick. I'm gonna to go to my second note, which was my F, okay? That's the first fret on the E string. I'm going to skip a string and go up two frets. That note is also an F. This shape right here, if you can get this, where you skip a string and go up two frets, the notes are the same, they're just an octave apart. So they are a full range apart from one another there. So those are both Fs. So if you memorize this shape, and you memorize what this note is, then you know that this is an F. That's also true going up anywhere on the fretboard. So I can go here, and I, and I know that that note's a G now, so I skip a string, and I go up two frets, one, two, and that note is also a G. 
that's a great shortcut to have in your back pocket to start memorizing the notes all over the fretboard quickly. Moving on with the riff, E, F, F sharp, G, of course F sharp and G flat. And now from here I'm going to skip a string and play my first F right there, which was my octave here. So da ba ba ba. Now I'm going to have my F there and finish it off by playing the G, which is up here on the fifth fret on the D string, and that is an octave right here of that low G. Here's the first half of the riff. Now we're going to apply that same shape, but just start on the A string, on the second string down from the E. So right here, we're going to start playing on our A string, playing the exact same shape. The open string, which is A, then B flat. B, C, skip a string over to my B flat, which is my octave down here from B flat, and then go up to my C, which is my octave from my C here. Da, 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 da. Back to the top. It's a great riff to help you start learning the notes on the fretboard. Now, taking a look at our left hand, what you can see is I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping one finger per fret as I'm playing up the fretboard. I'm totally guilty of not doing this 100% of the time. You'll start seeing a lot of info out there and a lot of conversation and blogs focusing on economy of motion and the best way to get from point A to point B, and yes, there usually is a best way to get there. But oftentimes and sometimes the best way isn't also the most comfortable way for you to arrive there as well. So play what's comfortable at first, of course making sure that you're paying attention to the correct ergonomics so you're not going to injure yourself as you're playing. But as you need to develop more speed, you'll find the fastest economy of motion for you. So if right away using these three fingers is not just really working out for you, feel free to just use one finger and skip up. Da, 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 da. Now that's not necessarily creating a bad habit, but I would like you to work on developing the habit of using your three fingers over here, always alternating with your right hand and working on those notes. So recapping real quick here, we took a look at how to start memorizing the notes in your fretboard. Get the chart from the website, lots of different tools out there, whether it be apps, whether it be climbing up and down the fretboard, whether it be uh, playing and memorizing that Herbie Hancock chameleon riff there, and we started talking about the left hand using the first three fingers. Well, what about that pinky in there? That pinky finger serves a big, big purpose for a lot of players out there. Let's make sure that we explore that for a little bit. Here's an exercise called a spider crawl. It isn't very musical as far as having pretty notes right next to each other. It's all semitones but it is a great way for you to start getting used to playing with all four of your fingers here. I recommend starting on the fifth fret. So on your fifth fret on your E string with your number one finger, play the fifth fret, then play the sixth fret with your second finger, then the uh, seventh fret with your third finger, and the eighth fret with your pinky. And then we climb up to the next string, then the next string, next string. That's called a spider crawl. Da, 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 da. We find the next group of four. And then we come down. And all the way back down the fretboard. It's a great tool to help you start working out all four of your fingers, having good ergonomics, having good posture as you're going through the process. And it's gonna be a great powerful tool uh, to help you really start getting that left hand going. Make sure you're focusing with your right hand on alternating and anchoring correctly. And make sure you stay tuned for the next lesson, guys, which is a conversation about exploring the major scale and the natural minor, which is going to be our, our Ionian mode and also our Aeolian mode as well. So if you're already familiar with modes, stick around, that'll start chatting about those things. If it's foreign to you, don't worry, we'll see you at the next lesson. You'll find it right here, and we're going to jump into it. Guys, that wraps up this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you find us online. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, find us on Google+, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, tell a friend. I look forward to seeing you guys at the next session. This is Ryan here, signing off from Bass Matter. Have a good one.